Hi, welcome back to Three Talking Rabbits. I'm Gail. It's been a hot second since the last video. Still sitting in the same place with the same chicks. It's amazing. Um, I'm sitting in my chick A-frame right now. This is the first day that the girls have been out. And they are loving life. Best day ever. This is a homeschool video, not a chicken video, about the myths of homeschooling. There's a few of them, <laughs> and they're kind of fun. Um, so hopefully you can sit back and enjoy this one and maybe laugh with me, maybe get a little mad with me. It'll all be good. So I am, this is, these are full disclaimers here. I am coming at this from the, I'm, I'm also reading a script. Um, I'm coming at this from the perspective of a secular academic homeschooler who lives in New York State. So put that in the box it belongs in, okay? I cannot speak for everyone in the homeschooling community, obviously, and the following statements are my opinions and my observations with some official type data to back up those opinions. Um, I am not being a diligent researcher here. This is strictly informal. So please take that into consideration. Um, if you have a different perspective, I would love to hear it in the comments below. Okay, And that slapping sound, I have a tarp over the A-frame just to keep the rain off, so I apologize for that. Myth number one. Homeschoolers are all super conservative, white, and religious. Um, secular academic homeschooling has close to 9,000 members. This is nationwide. The local secular groups have over a thousand families in the greater Rochester area alone. Not all of those people are currently homeschooling. Some of them have finished, some of them are just thinking about it, but that's just in the secular groups, not the religious groups. I didn't count the religious groups because I'm not in them. Around 60% of homeschoolers are white. That's based on a nationwide survey. The rest are not, so that means 40% of homeschoolers are not white, which means that that's a reflection of the general population. Um, and just because somebody happens to follow a particular religion does not mean that they homeschool because of that religion. And that's a very important distinction to make, too. Some people do, but nationwide it's about 12% who homeschool because of their faith, according to a 2016 national survey. I will try to get that data link for you in the description below. New York has supposedly seen a 20% increase in homeschooling since the pandemic, and that has primarily been in the secular end of things, with the fastest growth seen in black and Hispanic families. And that um, just informal observation of the Facebook groups I'm in, that, that follows. Um, that seems to be the trend. Um, we did have a few ultra-conservative families join a local group during the um, pandemic with the mask mandates. Um, and some of them did stay in homeschooling, but the vast majority of them went back to public school as soon as the mandates lifted. Um, or they started their own private school, and that was a really interesting thing to watch. There was like this whole sovereign citizen thing going on, and I was just like, oh my god. If you are, fine, okay? That, I'm not judging you, okay? I'm totally judging you. But you do you, okay? <laughs> so, um, just speaking from personal like our personal family, my son has seen a Bible a few times in his life, and we've talked about Christianity as a religion and like the, what the basic beliefs are, but we're not, um, we're secular. Um, so, yeah. Myth number two. New York homeschool regulations are scary. Okay, I didn't scare my chicks then, that's good. I was trying not to be too scary there. Um, New York homeschool regulations are not scary. Um, they are not insurmountable objects. They provide a very neat framework to build a very good education around. New York is highly regulated, but that's like saying three fish is way more than zero fish. Okay? It, it's not a big deal. Um, we file four types of paperwork. The first is your letter of intent to homeschool, and that literally says, I intend to educate my child born on this day for this school year. That's it. That's all it says. Um, the second one is an individual home instruction plan, or IHIP as it's known, and that's just the curriculum that you're using or whatever your education plan happens to be. 
And that's the one that most people struggle with because you have to get it in in a certain amount of time and trying to decide what curriculum you're going to use is like stress, okay? Um, but once you get over that hurdle, you're okay. Um, and you also don't necessarily have to stick to it. You just have to say why you deviated from it if you do. Um, the third type of paperwork is four quarterly reports that say what you actually did. Um, and then the fourth type of assessment is a final assessment, or a fourth type of paperwork is a final assessment, which is either a narrative report for younger kids, which say so-and-so completed these things in a satisfactory manner. And, you know, it, it can be long or it can be short. That's up to you. Or standardized test scores. There's also like a portfolio review thing, which I guess goes through the co-ops, but I have never pursued that, so I really can't speak to it. And I don't know as if all school districts allow for that. Uh, I, I, I'm hazy on that one. Um, so get your format down in the first couple years and then just copy paste that sucker. Fill it out as you go. It is not a big deal. Okay. Um, let me know in the comments if you want me to do a homeschooling video on New York State Regulations 101.10 sometime. I will totally do it. I am not a lawyer. I'm just a homeschool mom. But I promise, promise it's really easy. Okay, homeschool myth number three. Homeschool kids don't do any schoolwork. They just run around or play video games all day. <laughs> My son wishes this were so true. This is not true. Um, we do school year round and we average between four to six hours per day depending on the day. We always exceed the 900 hours of required instructional time, though I've never clocked it precisely. Um, he also decided that two weeks of vacation this summer was more than enough and he hauled me out of my relaxing summertime and he was like, okay, mommy, it's Monday and it's 1030 and we're late for school. And I was like, what? <laughs> and he's like, come on, we got to do school. I was like, what? <laughs> so yeah, homeschool kids, they do schoolwork. Um, <clears throat> I'm not going to deny the running wild part and swinging from trees and playing video games thing. No, that's totally true. They do that. Um, so do every other kid on the face of the planet, I hope. Um, myth number four. Homeschool kids are socially awkward shut-ins. Some of them might be. It could well be true. Um, it's totally okay to be a socially awkward introvert. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, most of the homeschool kids I know will talk your ear off about whatever their area of interest is and whatever the latest research project is and whatever bug they just found, okay? Um, so I do allow for their geekiness in all the best ways. Um, they certainly know who they are as people and they don't feel like they have to follow a crowd because there's not so big of a crowd to follow. They get outside a lot for being stereotyped as shut-ins. I don't know a homeschool child that does not have major tan lines. Um, we do have to set a gas and activity budget because otherwise we're gone too much. Um, and I can't paint that fast to cover those bills. Um, homeschool children are more likely to interact with people of all ages within their communities, um, more so than public school children are just because homeschool children are out in their communities more often. Homeschool kids, oh, I'm sorry, myth number five. Homeschool kids are all super nice and polite. They do tend to be. Um, I'm not saying that that's across the board because obviously there are some kids who are just little stinkers. Um, but for the most part, yes, homeschool kids are very nice and polite. Um, but I do assure you the sass is there, the sneaky is there, all the normal kid stuff is there. Um, it's just not there in an amplified peer pressure sort of way, like that meanness that can happen in public school doesn't really happen in homeschool all that much because there isn't the peer pressure to do that. Um, I also think that there tends to be some peer pressure towards kindness in public or in homeschool groups that you won't, because otherwise you don't get invited back. Like the thing is, is that you're, you are there on other people's say so. Um, and if you aren't nice, then they don't have to put up with you. You know, nobody's sticking you in that classroom and saying you have to be here. Um, 
that does not mean that they don't get into disagreements and that hurt feelings don't happen. They do. It's just a little bit less prevalent than in public schools. Um, there's fewer kids and everyone is there of their own free will. Um, and you can move around until you find a group that suits you. And that can be hard. That, like that's one of the downsides, but it, that's just one of the things that you can choose to who you associate with. Um, another factor is that parents usually have to be present so they can actually hear what their kids are saying and correct the behavior. And parents are responsible for the children's behavior too, whereas when you're in a public school classroom and you're the teacher doing classroom management, you don't always hear the bad things that those kids are saying or you can't address that or you get, you're not my mom. Can you tell I've been a teacher? Um, this is, again, this is not across the board, um, but that's been my experience in co-ops that we participate in. Um, other parents have also offered, other parents have also offered gentle corrections to children who are not their children um, when kids are misbehaving, and that allows the kids to set healthy boundaries um, and to get the hang of, like, um, good social interaction. Okay, myth number six. Six, which, which way do we want this to go? We'll go this way. Myth number six. Homeschooling is free or homeschool families are rich. No. <laughs> um, boy, do I wish I was rich. I am totally not. Hi, baby. What's you doing? You can come pack my shoes. I would love it if you came and packed my shoes. Um, homeschooling can be done inexpensively depending on your definition of inexpensive. But no, it's not free, um, nor are most of us rich. Again, see the thing about taking a hit on income. Um, we don't get state or federal aid, and we won't ask for it because if we did receive it, that would mean that we would have a higher um, degree of, I'll, I'll call it, responsibility or answerability to the state, uh, it would be a higher degree of regulations because as soon as they give us money, then we have an obligation to show what we are doing. Um, we're going to take a little bit of a detour here and say, where does that tax money go that these schools claim that they are not receiving for our children? I want to know that. Like seriously, where does that tax money go? Because we pay it directly to the school district. So if they're losing money by our kids not attending, where is that money going? I want to know that. Um, we spend somewhere between a thousand and three thousand a year on his education, between books, curriculum, printing materials, uh, classroom materials, field trips, outside lessons, special events, projects, and membership fees. Um, <clears throat> some of that comes out of our fun. Family. Boy, I'm trying to talk fast here. It's not really working out. Some of that comes out of our family budget. Some of it I sell artwork and other items to cover the cost of. Myth number seven. Homeschooling is hard. Uh, the answer to this is it depends, and it largely depends on your child. Um, it is a full-time job because your job does not end at the four-hour mark or the six-hour mark. Uh, figure at least another hour of planning and paperwork, and then you still have to be the parent after that. We are fortunate in our living situation that we can homeschool, but it definitely takes time, energy, effort, community, and a heaping helping of patience. Um, this is a partnership. If you hate teaching, or if the kid hates learning from you, this is not going to work. Hi, baby. Because the most important relationship is the parent-child dynamic. If And you have that for a lifetime. You don't want to wreck it just to be their teacher um, if they don't want you to be their teacher. So if you can find a balance between the parent and the teacher, and they find theirs as the child and the student, it's beautiful and it works. But if you can't find that balance, this is not the right path. Okay. Oh, goodness. That is quite the cheapen. Hi. M multiple kitties. Okay. 
So today we're spoiled for choice in curriculum, so it can be hard to sort through all of the different options, but you don't have to build everything from scratch like a lot of people did 30 years ago. And a lot of courses are scripted, boxed, open and go type things. Um, online learning is a thing, which we'll sort of touch on again. Um, Co-ops are all over the place, and something that's really important in New York State is that they not exceed 50% of the educational time, otherwise it is considered a private school. Um, we have cats on either side, so the birds are kind of freaking out right now. Sometimes you'll run into problems that you can't seem to solve on your own. Kids can solve the math, or my, my kid can solve the math in his head, but won't write the answer on the correct line. Um, some kids will like know their phonograms, but they aren't putting them together into the words, um, transposing B's and D's. So you need to rely on your online community. You need to rely on your other co-op parents, um, friends and family who are teachers will often help you out through their own free will. Buy them a coffee or snacks for their school or materials for their school if they routinely help you out. They're helping you out. You need to help them out, okay? If you work outside the home, homeschooling is more challenging, but it is still possible. While online learning is not nearly as good as one-on-one -on -one instruction, it is a viable option for busy parents and still shakes out slightly better than the average public school when it comes to test scores. Depending on a lot, you need to pick a good program and you need to follow up on it. Myth number eight. Homeschool kids miss out on public school experiences. Sometimes they do, and it depends on which experiences you're talking about, but to be honest, just about any experience or activity that happens in public school has, um, well, hello there, how are you? Just about any experience or activity that happens in public school has an extracurricular equivalent that homeschoolers can be and probably are involved in. Um, in some cases more so than the public school counterparts. But prom, you cry. Dance lessons are a thing. Um, homeschool prom is a thing. We have, one of my co-ops is doing yearbook pictures. You know, it like, like it's all, we aren't missing out on yearbooks. We're actually doing yearbooks. Um, we have graduation ceremonies and parties too. Theater, bowling, swimming lessons, got you covered. Uh, homeschool soccer, it's a thing. <laughs> Myth number nine. Homeschool kids are really smart or really dumb. I've seen both. Homeschool kids have a wide range of intelligence, just like public school kids, just like the rest of the population. They are not out of the range of normal. Um, the benefit of homeschooling across the board is that homeschool children can learn at their own pace. Whether that's an accelerated pace or a delayed pace, they have the option and the freedom to learn at their own pace. Whether that means learning in ways that work for them versus struggling to keep up, really, or waiting for an entire class to catch up to them when all the kids are learning at different rates, um, not being met where they are because it's not possible in a classroom of 30 plus kids to meet every student where they are you, in 50 minutes. You just can't do it. Some kids may do really well with book or workbook learning and some may do well in a hands-on unschooling format. Myth number 10. Homeschool kids can't get into college. This is totally untrue. Like zero truth in this. Many great universities seek out homeschool children because they are versatile, self-motivated learners. Many, who, many homeschoolers also graduate high school with an associate's degree from a community college, um, taken at a reduced rate, so look into that if you're in New York. New York is fantastic about that. Um, and many of the area kids where I am use Genesee Community College or GCC. Also, college is not the only viable option after high school. And we should all remember that. You have trade schools, you have international studies, you have going to work. Um, all of those things are options that children can take. Meow, I'm not letting you in. 
If you've stuck with me to the end, thank you for this. Um, I hope this gives you some food for thought. I hope I painted a realistic picture of what our homeschooling experience is like. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like. Um, subscribe so that you don't miss the next videos in the series. And please leave a comment below with your own homeschooling experience, good or bad. I want to hear both. Um, just keep it honest. And I think taking a realistic look at the situation of homeschooling is important versus only hyping it up or only trashing it. All right. Thank you so much for joining me on Three Talking Rabbits. I hope you enjoyed all the peeping chicks. They cannot get to you. I promise, promise. You will not be eaten. Ever, ever. Okay? You are not You are not for eating. You are for laying. Okay? Uh, I know. She would totally eat you if she could get to you. She would. But I will not let her. Okay? Okay. All right. Thank you.